Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we are going to be installing a Give Energy All-in-One with Gateway and 11 Jinko 435 watt all black solar panels. I've got my usual team with me, Matthew and Nathan, and we are joined by Matt Telford on this one who's come for some work experience to see how these systems pull together on site while he's going through his training to be an electrician. I'll show you up on the roof some of the things we need to consider around all of that. It's a particularly different and difficult roof this one I would say certainly for us as relatively new installers to industry where we're going up four rows in portrait on a pretty steep aspect we'll show you it all out on site with the guys and have a chat through the install itself and as always we'll look at how the gateway and the all-in-one can make going off grid a real easy prospect for a consumer and also to give loads of flexibility in where you're ge generating electricity and then storing it and also how you're utilizing that stored energy alongside the grid there are so many options and capabilities of this given energy system it is off the scale so for example the all-in-one itself can output continuously at six kilowatts it will peak 7.2 and if your solar system happens to be generating at the same time it will also add that on top for the house loads so if you're off grid because the grid's gone down you can take that six kilowatts out of your all-in-one if the sun shines on the roof and you've got another five kilowatts there as well that will go to the house loads it gives a real prospect of running your demand during daytime when you are off grid and equally again if you're purchasing energy overnight on a cheap tariff you can pop that into your battery with its 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage and then utilize that during the day when energy is not so cheap but for those of you wondering where i am at the minute this isn't the customer job we are staying away from home we're outside of our normal working area it's an exciting week we've got proteus coming out to site to see us i think electric safety first are coming out to see us as well so richard and dave if i can get any footage with those guys and girls on the course of this video i will do we'll cover some of the um, key products as well involved alongside this installation we're using lots of proteus gear but i'm waffling we're in a lodge so we've come to stay in a lodge park um, we've got a nice big spacious lodge for me matthew and nathan and we've got a few extra added benefits as well which are nice i'll take you for a quick look around just to show you the primary reason for booking this was more to do with safe parking of the vans as those of you who watched the channel before you will know we've been done over more times than i would like to mention and we always take that into account when we are working away for a prolonged period because you've got no option but to bring your gear with you and keep it in your van you can't be unloading everything in and out to a hotel room every night and this cost us 500 pounds for the four night stay while we're working away on this system i'll take you for a quick whiz around so first up is the danger end this is where nathan's residing he's actually got three bedrooms to choose from for himself i think he's packed in that one we weren't embarrassing with all of his stuff he's left over the floor but he could take a clean bed for every night if he wanted down this end uh, in his bathroom and then we've got our front room here with um nice view out into the countryside we're literally the last lodge on this estate so you can see out over there there's a few others off into the distance so we're tucked right down the back little patio area out there another one out there i'll take you outside and show you that in a minute the guys have been um getting domesticated cooking a few meals and um, enjoying themselves as you'll see uh nice entrance way fancy fridge freezer which is great uh, matthew's residing in there with his little ensuite so he's got his own little bathroom and i'm in this one don't mind showing my room this is three nights in so i kept this reasonably tidy i'm impressed with myself a nice little shower cubicle there but the awesome benefit of this and it was a total surprise to be honest because we wasn't expecting it but we've actually got a nice little hot tub out there which is great for relaxing after we've been busy out on site every day to come back and uh, jump in and uh, chill out nice view out into the distance a little stellar artois while we're in there and um yeah that's us for the week see the van there it would have been extra special if it had an electric vehicle charge point somewhere on this site but it doesn't we can't have everything so let's move on with the video and see some electrical content and jump out to site with the guys so we're on another give energy gateway you can see we've got it cabled and labeled up we've gone for a bigger set of trunking on this one primarily to allow plenty of space for the cables running within it and also it seems to fit nicer with the equipment you've also got the option if you want to drop that down onto the trunking itself rather than having it above but obviously with the antenna here and the wi-fi signal we wanted to keep that out and we didn't have an extended wi-fi um, cable kit for the actual gateway just the aio itself so we've got our ac isolator down there and that's the m2 variety ip67 as you can see we're all glanded in to the trunking and through and we just need to pop a few clips to secure this 
in its entry point to the AIO. Point of note with this, you've got the blue button on the side that you need to hold down to turn the system on, and then the DC MCB that you require for the battery system as well, all in the product itself, which is fantastic. Two wiring chambers, so inside here there is some glands that go through to the actual connection point themselves, so why these grommets maybe aren't weather sealed, internal to that is. So we've got that all locked in there as well. You can see we've got the gateway feeding down to the AIO here, and as always, we'll open this up and I'll show you how all of that comes together. Got the Solax um, inverter here, and this is a five kilowatt variety, and that's just gonna give us the string voltage off the roof down through the system into the gateway. So we've got our DC isolator over in there. We need to apportion the correct colors. I only had green and yellow tape, so that's marking the live for us or the positive at the minute, but I will pop the right colors on there in due course. And then we've got the isolator for the inverter itself as well, local to it. Now I've made this point before that inside the gateway, there is isolation points for both the AIO and the PV inverter. And my view is if it's all in local proximity to each other, you could really potentially do away with those. However, because this is behind a door that needs a key and that key might not be to hand, I guess it makes sense to still fit them. So that's the approach we're taking. These are the highlight glands. So they're the ones that twist in. There's no lock nut on the inside of these. So super duper easy to wire in. I've shown them before on the channel. I've got another M2 rotary isolator there. And unfortunately M2 don't seem to do DC variety. So we've got a Skarma DC isolator for the strings. Even though there is an isolation switch on the bottom of this inverter, I've made my views around all of that, known that when the inverter's on the floor, where's your isolation point for your strings without it? If you're using optimizers, from Solar Edge, for example, it's less of an issue, but still, it makes perfect sense to pop a point of isolation in the wiring system. And I don't fall for the rubbish around these been dangerous. It's the people wiring them up incorrectly that's dangerous, and that's the problem we need to solve. Not removing them just because of that problem. You can have the same issue with your MC4 connectors, with the wiring systems on the roof. If people aren't capable of wiring up these DC isolators, industry's got a far bigger problem than simply removing them from the DC strings. It's a ridiculous concept. So you'll see here we have the main switch for the grid. So this is the grid feed coming in and that is um, bringing us our 100 amp service head into the AIO, um, also to export as well. So essentially that's the grid connection through this 100 amp MCV. And then we've got our loads on this 80 amp MCV. So all the house loads sit off of that. If you need to isolate down to the consumer unit, for example, that can be the switch that you use to do that. And then over on this side, we've got the PV and the AIO isolators. And as I've shown in earlier videos, they basically feed to a buzz bar in the back of this, which then links out to these house loads and potentially the EV charger when it's launched as well. So when you're running in battery backup, the AIO will feed power into the buzz bar, which will then run the house loads. If the PV is generating at the same time, they will also go to the house loads as well, which gives you the potential in this case to have up to 11.2 kilowatts, actually 12.2 with the um, maximum. Obviously the continuous rating of that is the 11 kilowatts. So it will peak a bit above that, but for your continuous, you're at 11 kilowatts if it's sunny enough, which is brilliant. And then again, if you're wanting to use this system to charge a battery of off-peak, you can take energy from the grid, run it through into the AIO, and it'll lock it up for use later on when the power is more expensive to use from the grid. So you can save some money that way around as well. So I hope that makes sense in terms of what this does. There's also the metering built into the product. So there's no need for any external meters or anything like that. It's all built into the AIO itself, which is super duper. And on the underside of the Solax there, you can see we've got our earth bond. So that's running up to bond the equipment. And then we just use the one string because this is an optimized array. And then we've got our main feed in onto this plug here as well. Obviously, if this was a hybrid system, you would then have your DC cables out of here to the battery. But the Give Energy system is AC coupled. So the AIO has its own inverter to convert the stored power in the batteries to AC. And then it feeds it into the gateway itself. So we are at the testing and commissioning phase now and as always we've got the TIS gear to help us cover that off. So we've got the PV check which I've demonstrated on the channel lots before to run through the testing of our voltages and currents on the array and also make sure that the insulation is still intact in terms of the string wiring as well. We've also got the MFT Pro Plus which is going to look after the AC side of testing because obviously we've interfered with the main connection point into the entire install so we need to verify that we haven't caused an issue there and as always the safe isolation kit and that now includes 
proven for any diverted neutral currents that could be present in the earthing system before we disconnect the earthing conductor. Um, in this case it wasn't such concern because we weren't disconnecting the bonds as well but still just for belts and braces we've carried out that measurement and we can match that up with the software in these two products just to ensure that what these are saying is actually what's going on out to the grid and then up on the roof we've got the um, IR gauge so we can measure the um, iridians that's hitting the array and then the anticipated output it should be giving us is shown on the PV check as well and of course there's all the usual commissioning with the give energy and solax stuff that you need to activate the warranties otherwise we're all but done i will take you up onto the roof and show you the finished product shortly and have a little chat about all this coming together as a system apologies about the audio on this one the microphone was playing up i've had to voice over this section because it was actually horrendous but you can see we've got the 11 panels on the roof got six up at the top there in two rows of three and then we've got these four and then one in landscape at the bottom. Basically the six at the top will have eight hooks under it all together. So each rail will have four hooks and then the rails below. So the two panels will have six hooks. And then this last panel at the bottom obviously needs the four hooks to hold the rail in the vertical position. Missing an end cap off there, as I'm saying, I've under ordered that. So that's going to be getting popped on there after the fact. Unfortunately, we couldn't scramble one together out of any of the vans, but it is what it is sometimes. You are just missing the odd annoying part and that's super easy to pop on. These are the 435 watt Jinko panels. So these are the Neos and they do have the Tigo optimizers on the back just to try and help with any potential shading that may come off that gable that you can see perking out there. Sorry, the dormant that you can see perking out there. Uh, and yeah, these are mounted on Van der Volk rail and the black end caps. I think it sets it off quite nicely. We're about 500 mil off the ridge. Didn't want to go any closer than that due to the steepness of it and the potential for the wind causing us an issue. We're 400 mil off the sides and we nearly had enough space to squeeze a fourth one in on that top row, but it was just going to clip the gable and we didn't want to be sitting the panel on top of the ridge itself. So we've not put that one in there and we've got our 11 panels on by utilizing the space right at the bottom with a landscape panel fitted in there, which has come up just a treat. Um, yeah, it was a, a tricky one with this roof, but we got around it, we got done, and I think that looks pretty decent. Now you can see here, this is me talking about the closing segment of the video and everything that we have done. And basically just to say, if you are a consumer and you're looking for a quotation for a solar system and battery storage, be that an AIO or another variety, then please do get in touch. We are open to discussions with anybody around a system you might want installing in your home. This customer is now able to run entirely off-grid should they choose and also make use of low-cost energy at off-peak times to charge that battery system up and then draw down on it when energy is a little bit more expensive. The AIO itself now comes with a 12-year warranty as long as you have the servicing schedules as Give Energy dictate, which is super. That's just been increased from 10 years. And the panels and everything else have the 25-year performance guarantee, which is absolutely fantastic. Credit to the scaffolders on this one. They erected as a really good system. It was keeping us super safe, and that was really important on a roof that was as steep as we've done so far, to be honest. Matthew, Nathan, and Matt did a sterling job knocking that one out of the park. I think it came up really well, and the customer's super happy with it, which is what it's all about. If you've got any questions in and around this content, please do drop them in below, and if you'd like to get in touch, the links are in the description.